Descript takes the age-old concept of the video editing timeline and completely revamps the process. When you import your video file, the program uses speech detection AI to transcribe the video. It then links the transcription to frames in the video itself, claiming to allow users to edit video files as easily as a text document. I've done that before. As a video agency owner, I've created thousands of client videos and animations in industry standard programs like Adobe Premiere, After Effects, and Final Cut Pro. This video is not only a review and basic tutorial of Descript, it's also created entirely using Descript. So as you watch, keep in mind that any edit, 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 title, transition, or animation was made using the Descript editor. So as they say, smash that like button and let's get into it. After downloading Descript, I first watched a brief tutorial that appears the first time you open up the program. Then I got right into creating. The first step in my workflow was to open up the write panel inside of Descript. Descript doesn't only allow you to film and then import footage to transcribe, you can also write out a script within Descript and divide it into scenes. That's perhaps why this newest release, Descript, is called Storyboard. Bingo! To denote a new scene, you simply add a slash mark within your text where you imagine the camera changing or B-roll cutting in. To start, I simply wrote the script and kept a rough idea of scene changes in my head. I added a slash wherever I envisioned a scene change. This left me with a broken up text document containing a bunch of black squares. My plan is to write the full script and then go back and add in the scene ideas as the next step. However, one thing I found interesting and helpful is that as I wrote, the words appeared on this limited timeline-esque feature at the bottom, and above the words was a video time estimate, which gave me a rough estimate of how long my script was at that point. How long is this piddling to go on? For this particular video, I decided to stop and record this first half of the script so that I could make edits to the video and tell you how those edits went next. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed watching the first two minutes of this video. While only a few seconds have passed for you, I spent about three hours editing that first part. Then I went to a wedding. Now here I am talking about those edits and this part will need to be edited in the future. And how meta can you get? A few things to note about the Descript video creation process. While it didn't hurt, I probably didn't have to write the first pass of the script within Descript because once I imported the footage, Descript simply transcribed the audio of the footage Anyway, the transcription was fairly accurate. I'd say like 90% correct. It really would only mess up on small things. Like every time I said Descript, it would write the script. Do you know your name? No. Basically, you'd want to make a human pass or two if you were posting the transcript as a blog or something, but the transcription was more than fine to use for the text-based video editing process within Descript. Anyway, with this new transcribed audio, I went through and added the slash scene breaks again. You'll see that now, instead of black squares, there are little thumbnails of whatever is on screen during those words. In this case, me. But isn't that narcissistic? If I wanted to keep me on screen during that part, I left them as is. If I wanted to overlay a screen recording, title, animation, or GIF, I simply dragged it on top of that particular scene's thumbnail. If I wanted to insert a random movie clip, random. I just made a new blank paragraph starting with a slash. This created a black box that I could then drag a new clip onto. All in all, I really like and even prefer the text-based editing within Descript as compared to a traditional timeline-based edit. Primarily though, when it comes to the macro process of putting things generally in place. But there were downsides to Descript and a hypothesis I have, which I'll get to later. First, a few more things I enjoyed about Descript. I loved the built-in library of stock footage, GIFs, stickers, and music. Not only did it make it much easier to search and add those things directly within the editing software, it also is included in the price of your Descript subscription. At the time of making this video, Descript has a free version, a version that's $12 a month, and a version that's $24 a month. Given that some stock footage libraries alone are $20 plus a month, paying $24 a month for an incredibly powerful editor and a stock library is a pretty good deal. If you do decide to try out Descript, please use the link in the description of this video as it helps me to continue creating honest reviews at no extra cost to you. Thank you very much. Um, another amazing thing that uh, we won't get into, um, too much in this video is uh the automatic removal of um filler words another amazing thing that we won't get into too much in this video is the automatic removal of filler words this feature is particularly useful if you're doing a free form talking head video with no script and one to sound more eloquent a man that eloquent has to be saved it's also incredibly useful for podcast as Descript started as a podcast editing software. Also, if you mess up or forget to say something, you can create an AI voice clone of your own voice and type in the changes rather than have to physically re-record the audio. Hello, this is an AI clone of my voice. Descript trained it off of 20 minutes of video. 
Does it sound like me? Rate this voice clone one through 10 in the comments below. Let's get into what caused me trouble with Indescript, and then I'll compare Descript to something like Premiere Pro, tell you my hypothesis, and give you a buy or not recommendation based on your editing skill level. There were a few small things I found annoying, and they all mainly had to do with the timeline and me not being able to slide things the way I wanted. It was tough to tell if some of the things I wanted to do either weren't an option, or if the program was glitching, or it was simply me having a new user error. Coming from a traditional timeline editing background, I often find myself trying to work with in Descript's timeline, which is quite limited and restricting. However, when I kind of snap back and remember that I should try to utilize the text editor, it usually worked just fine. So that said, after initial bouts of frustration, I found out how to do pretty much everything I needed inside of Descript. But let's compare Premiere Pro and Descript. With Descript, you definitely can't go into as much detail on keyframing, color grading, and creating graphics or text as you can in Premiere Pro. However, in Descript, adding in something like an animated arrow is as simple as drag and drop as long as you aren't too picky. To sum up this comparison, Premiere Pro is really for pro video editors who want full control, while Descript is more focused on this newer content creator YouTuber audience who want ease and speed. My recommendations are as follows. Personally, I'm happy to pay for both Descript and Premiere Pro. I'll likely use Descript to create a macro edit for for long form content and then export the XML from Descript into Premiere Pro. There, you'll have all the edits you made in Descript and you can further fine tune the video and make changes. Yes, you can export the project from Descript, which is an awesome feature. However, in my situation, I'm happy to pay for both as I run a marketing agency making videos for clients, like to mess around on my own YouTube videos, and as you can tell from some of my YouTube videos in crypto, I'm financially irresponsible. Then we'll reinvest the earnings into foreign currency accounts with compounding interest and it's gone. But if you have to choose between the two, here's what I'd say. If you're already using Premiere Pro and it's working for you, stick to that. Switching from Premiere to Descript has a relearning curve for people used to the traditional timeline. If you're a brand new editor wondering what to start out with, I'd say if you're more interested in the process and art of editing, for instance, you wanna edit a movie or a commercial, then learn Premiere. If you're more interested in being a content creator, like creating YouTube videos, and especially if you want to create a podcast, learn Descript. You'll be able to do 95% of what you want to do within Descript and likely be able to learn Descript much faster than Premiere, and the editing basics are faster within Descript than Premiere. Now, my final hypothesis. <laughs> AI is infiltrating more and more business and creative tools. Descript is utilizing a lot of new breakthroughs in natural language processing, and I think Adobe is going to start to take note of it. As Descript gains in popularity, more professional editing programs like Adobe will likely add in a text-based editor within their software. Either that, or they're just going to buy Descript the way they bought Figma for $20 billion. That's a lot of money. I also think as Descript grows, it will find ways to improve the flexibility and pro features of its timeline. So what I'm really saying is that while these tools are pretty different now, I do think that they will converge with time, each copying the helpful features from the other. So that said, you can't go wrong learning either or both programs. I personally am super happy I bit the bullet and took the day to learn Descript. The learning curve was fast. It was essentially just watching a tutorial and then gutting through the beginner frustrations of creating this video. Now I'm already looking forward to creating my next video in Descript. So if you could like and subscribe, I'll see you in that next video. Thanks for watching.